It seems like one of the themes of season two and really this entire show was mo friends, mo problems. Komi is still attempting to make 100 friends and on her journey to do so, she encountered a lot of chaos. Whether it be Yamai stealing her leggings or being intimidated by Katai, her story is filled with a lot of chaos and humor. And we're gonna be talking about all of that right now because it's your boy, the hot rodster here. And today I'll be reviewing the second season of the anime, Komi Can't Communicate. Not to mention, I'm changing up the style of my video, so please let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. But this season was actually not too different from the last season. It's a bunch of short stories about Komi-san or her close friends, and it's all centered on Komi overcoming her social anxiety. Sure, the stories are different, but it's still the same format, so in order to prevent this review from being the exact same as my last review, I will be analyzing more details about the plot and the individual stories. So without further ado, let's get into the review. In case you don't remember for some reason, Komi Can't Communicate is an anime about a high school girl who has problems talking and interacting with people. This season started off in a fantastic way with the introduction of Katai Makoto because to me, he was basically just the male version of Komi-san. I honestly felt like I related to his character more than any other in this show. His whole thing is that he wanted to make friends, but he comes off very threatening. It's probably because he's tall, big, and low-key gives off Yakuza energy. But the reason I relate to him the most is because I'm also tall, pretty big, and not not to mention black. Sometimes when I go out for a walk, I see people get a little nervous or scared in my presence. So I somewhat know what it's like for people to judge you based on your appearances before they get to know you. But Katai took it to the extreme because no one wanted to talk to him due to his threatening presence, which made it next to impossible for him to make friends, which is why it was so wholesome for Tadano to offer his own friendship. Because not only did it demonstrate Tadano's ability to read the room well, but it also demonstrated his kindness and willingness to help others. He is a very likable protagonist. However, one thing that kind of turned me off from the season was Najimi because it seemed like they wanted to prevent Katai from learning and growing. In the last video, I said I liked them because they had their own agenda. However, it definitely got on my nerves a bit this season because Tadano was so close to getting Katai and Komi to understand each other, but she decided to ruin this process for shits and or giggles. Both of these individuals have so much in common, but instead of being good, genuine friends, they fear each other. But while that was a crappy thing to do, I guess it does fit into this video's theme of mo friends, mo problems. But another thing we can add to that theme is the rivalry between Yamai and Nakanaka. Naka. I don't know if this existed in the last season and I'm just now noticing or if it came to light in this season. Either way, it provided me with so much entertainment. They fought for Komi's affection and attention and tried to prove that they were the better friend or perhaps even lover. I vividly remember a moment where their rivalry resulted in a Pokemon battle. I don't even remember what they were arguing about, but I saw the familiar GUI that I saw in that classic game. Their rivalry also came out in a really funny way when they attempted to analyze Komi's feelings and emotions. It not only demonstrated how her simple actions could be misinterpreted, it conveyed that Tadano understands her better than most people at the school do. It also brought the attention back to the Yamai Nakanaka -naka rivalry that was somewhat in the background for the whole season. In my last review, I said that Yamai was one of my favorite characters, but that has become less true for this season. Her elaborate plans to see Komi's underwear or touch her boobs got pretty old pretty quickly. Despite these complaints, there was one moment of perviness that actually made me laugh a lot. It was when Yamai noticed the tear in Komi's stockings. She thought about all the things she can do to see more of her legs, but instead of acting on those urges, she helped Komi-san out by telling her about the tear. She had new stockings for her to change into, which is really weird when you think about it, but her perverted nature took over once again when Komi handed her the worn stockings. It was like I had future sight because I just knew that as soon as she had an article of Komi's clothing, she would put it over her face and sniff it all over. I don't know why, but this didn't bother me as much as the other perverted things that Yamai did. In fact, I actually found it to be quite humorous. Maybe it was because she was just trying to do the right thing for so long, but eventually she just gave in to her primal urges. One random thing that was shown at the beginning of the season was some of the boys making fantasies about how dates with specific girls would go. I related to this a lot because I make up fantasy date scenarios in my head all the time about my crushes, and no, they aren't dirty. Well, at least the overwhelming majority of them are not. They're usually wholesome, feel-good things like the fantasies in this show, which is why I related to them so much. 
However, I never really told these fantasies to anyone, so I feel like I missed out a bit on the high school experience, I'm not gonna lie, but seeing these guys swap their imaginary date stories just made me feel right at home. It was honestly one of my favorite parts of the season. I also really liked the Christmas episode because with the way it was structured, we got to see the same event twice, but from different perspectives. While people can't really pick up on Komi's emotions, Komi also struggles with picking up on the vibes of other people as well. I honestly don't know if she even recognizes how much the other students worship her, but those communication barriers feed into each other. Because no one understands Komi, they thought that she wasn't excited to see them nor did she like the gift. On the other hand, Komi didn't recognize how her classmates felt like they had failed to make her happy or surprise her when they actually did. The Christmas episode in May really just highlighted this for me and it helped me to better understand the premise of this show. Another problematic character introduced in this season was the narcissist Narus Shishuto, and I loved him. Some people tell me that I can be a bit narcissistic myself, so maybe that's why I enjoyed this character as much as I did. I just liked how over the top his introduction was. The episode before his character came into the picture, there was a really flashy and epic trailer to prepare for his debut. Then, before his introduction, there was a brief explanation about the Greek myth of Narcissus. I actually learned about this mythology before I even learned about the word Narcissus because I had a teacher who really loved Greek mythology, so it was nice to see it represented in this show. Narus just brought so much more comedy and problems to the show which really made me grow attached to his character within the span of an episode. Everything about the school trip was awesome and it contained some of my other favorite moments from this season. Like the little side story which centered on the tour guide who was getting discouraged from her job because most of the students didn't really give a crap. It was so wholesome when she realized that even if she had a positive impact on one person, then her effort would have been worth it. It just filled me with happiness when both Taruno and Komi were able to restore her faith in her abilities as a tour guide. The whole thing with Narus and Katai was so hilarious. It almost looked like it was straight out of a yaoi. Not that I would even know what that looks like. It demonstrated some character growth from Narus because he was able to acknowledge the strength of someone other than himself. Not only that, but he interacted with the person that most people were too scared to interact with. I believe the whole situation looked really sus without context, but I also think that it was really wholesome as it was the beginnings of a new friendship for Katai. I specifically really liked Komi's journey throughout this trip because she seemed to be opening up more. She participated in a fun pillow fight and she spent a whole day with Kato and Sasaki, two girls who she hadn't really interacted with much prior to this trip. Watching these girls bond over the fun events they had planned to do was just amazing to watch. The group started off really nervous because Komi didn't know Kato and Sasaki and they both feared Komi because they didn't believe that they had the capacity to impress her. But by the end of the day, their friendship was so strong that they were sharing deep secrets like a passion for yo-yos and their crushes. These two new friends also learned that Komi isn't as intimidating as they originally thought, which means that they were actually able to understand her more than most people do, including some of her friends. I know that Komi is going for 100 friends, but I'm honestly not sure if she can have that many good friendships. One thing I noticed was that a lot of the friends she acquired were unaware of her social anxiety and didn't really understand her as a human being. I hope that she eventually realizes that it's not about the quantity of her relationships, it's about the quality. And both Kato and Sasaki are definitely high quality friends. One of the last things I wanted to talk about in this video was the relationship between Tadano and Komi-san. They technically don't have a romantic relationship yet, but it is so obvious that they like each other it's almost too cringe to watch. Komi had a crush on Tadano, but she didn't realize it until her new friends pointed it out to her on the school trip. Similarly, Tadano didn't realize he had feelings for Komi-san until White Day when he was struggling to figure out what kind of message he wanted to send with his gift. It is obviously very difficult for either one of them to act on their feelings, but I hope in future seasons we see them both pursue each other a little more aggressively. Another one of my favorite moments this season was when Komi-san went to Tadano's house to take care of him when he was sick. It demonstrated how much she really cared for him and it was just really cute seeing her look after him. This moment definitely brought them closer together even though they were both embarrassed by it. It seemed like Komi was more embarrassed by it than Tadano since he didn't remember much due to his sickness. I guess you can say that overall I have been really enjoying this show. I'm usually not a slice of life or romance type of guy, but I definitely like this so I may give some others a chance. Komi's desire for 100 friends has led to a bunch of crazy problems and chaos which provided hilarious content for me to watch. Like I said earlier in the video, I hope that she comes to the realization that it isn't the quantity of friendship that matters, it's the quality, and I really want to see some change in the next season, if there will be a next season, there hasn't been one confirmed to my knowledge, but what I mean by change is that I want the dynamics between certain characters to evolve. 
I liked how in this season, Tadano and Komi both realized that they have feelings for each other. Now I just need them to act on that. Also, it's going to be a new school year, which means it's possible that they won't even be sitting next to each other or even be in the same class. I just really want to see some more change and watch how these characters navigate that change. I guess I'll have to wait till the next season to find out. If you like this video, consider watching another one. I talk about a variety of different topics on this channel, so I hope to see you there. This has been The Hot Rodster. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.